This is a tutorial for Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio 2008. When you open Visual Studio, this is the opening screen that you get with the latest news from Microsoft. What we want to do for C is to come up here to New Project. This is a drop down, but the default is a new project, so I'm going to click it. And mine is not defaulted to go to any one language, so I do have to select what language I want as well as the type of project. And the type of project I want it for uh, this class is always going to be a Win32 Council application, which in the lab it defaults to. You do have to give it a name, so I'm going to call this one Tutorial. And it's going to save to my desktop, and that's fine, but you could change the directory using the Browse button. So I'm going to click OK. This is the screen that seems to cause the most confusions. You have to click on Application Settings, and then select Empty Project, because we want an empty code window, an empty project to start with. If you don't do that, then you end up with other resources in the program, and it doesn't execute correctly for our purposes. So I click Finish and it's building the project folder on the desktop. So now I have in my Solution Explorer over here on the right uh, my header files, resource files, and then my source files. And what we need to do is add a source file. To do that, there's another button on the toolbar, or you can also go to Project, Add New Item. But this is a drop-down, too, for Add New Item. But the default is that it's going to open the window for me. So I'm just going to click on it. And again, mine is not defaulted to the right program because I use it for several different languages. So I actually have to select the correct program. It is Vis Visual C, and the program type that I want is always going to be for this class C++ file with a .cpp extension. You can name it the same as the project. I tend to name a main because each C program has a main function. And then, I, again, it's going to go into my project folder, so I just click Add. Now I'll get an empty screen where I'm ready to actually type in my code. The first statements at the top have a pound sign and the word include followed by a less than and the name of the header file, which we'll dis discuss in detail as we move through the semester. So I'm going to put two header files in this one, so I just hit enter at the end of the first line. And now I'm going to put in the second header file, which is string. The first header file, IOStream, handles the basic input and output stream from the keyboard, the default device, to the monitor, the default device. The string header file allows me to have variables uh, that have a data type of string because string is not part of the original core of C or the kernel. Then the next line is using, and you always have to have this line too, namespace. And there are various namespaces, um, but we'll use the same one all semester. STD and a semicolon, which is the stat statement separator in C at the end of the line. And I'm using some white space here just to separate the different parts of the program out and make it a little bit easier to read. Then I'm ready to start my function heading for my program, and there has to be, it's required, that there is a function main. And it has an open and close parentheses because it is a function, and all functions have an open and close parentheses. Sometimes there's something in it, and sometimes there isn't. Um, and then the line underneath that is a curly brace because that indicates a block of code and indicates where my function starts. Notice, too, that C automatically does some indention for me, and I'm going to declare a variable of string. I can't spell today. String name. So what I've done there is to declare a variable called name to store a string. And then I'm going to prompt my user to actually key in the data. So what is your name is what I'm asking them. And I'm, again, including some space here because I don't want the cursor to run right up against my text. So I've got a blank there after the question mark. And then CN, which is my operator for getting input from the keyboard. C out is the operator to place my display or anything that I want to output on the screen, and C in gets it from the keyboard. C out uses the insertion operator, which is two less than symbols, and C in uses the extraction operator, which is two greater than symbols. So what I want to put here is the variable. 
So I've prompted my user asking them what their name is, and from the keyboard they type their name, and CN is going to read that. Then I'm going to do another C out, and I'm going to say a literal string, welcome to CIS251, and a blank space there, and then I separate things in my list with the insertion operator. So I'm going to print the person's name, which is stored in name, and then I'm going to use a manipulator, ENDL, ENDL, which means end of line. Then all functions have to have a return statement, and I could put any integer here that I wanted to. Zero is typically what you see, because I declared this as an integer function. Main is an integer. And then I have to have a closing brace, and that's all of our program. Now, I could have declared this as a void function and just had a plain return statement. Um, there are several different ways to do it, but this is the way it's done in the textbook, so this is the way I've showed you here. Now there are two steps. The first step is to build or compile the program, which means take this source code that's written in C and turn it into machine code. There's actually an intermediary step in that, but for our purposes we're just changing this code into machine code. So I click on the build menu and I can build solution. And down here at the bottom it tells me if I have any errors. And in this case I don't. Once I see the word linking I know that the program has actually compiled correctly and there are no syntax errors. So to run the program I want to go to debug on the menu and I want to start without debugging. If you start with debugging you aren't going to be able to see your output because the command window disappears. So I'm going to start without debugging and the window comes up and my window background is turned to white and my text black. So I type my name in there because it's prompting me for that and then it prints the statement welcome to CIS 251. So it's doing exactly what I've told it to do in the program and I can close this window either with the enter key or with the X on the top right corner. Now when you turn those windows in or you turn the output in you actually are going to have to print the screen for me, and you do that with the Control alt print screen key On my laptop, uh, it may not work, but I'll try. alt Control print screen which makes a copy of this, and I can then open Word or WordPad and paste it in. And then I would also copy and paste the code here by selecting it all or by doing Control a and copy it, where you can right click and copy, Control c or go to the edit menu and choose copy, put it on the clipboard and then drop it into the Word or the WordPad document. And that's the document that you'll actually submit to me. So to get a copy of your output window, it's Control alt delete and then you'll paste that into a document. And that's the end of this tutorial.